Frostpunk is the latest in tear-jerking emotional roller coaster games from 11 Bit Studios. The same guys brought you this war is mine. Another tearjerker, uh, if you were to play it. Emotionally taxing. Uh, from the music to obviously the content to uh, how it makes you suffer at the hands of trying desperately to learn the mechanics of the game before you wipe out your entire colony. It is an absolute challenge. And the first day that I streamed this, I was just completely uh, uh, just dissolved by this game uh, and what it's been. And, and I found out actually uh, on the second day of streaming, I was actually this is the first night actually after the stream, I went back and gave it another go. Uh, and I found, you know what helps quite a bit? Going in, and this may be a crime to some, turning off the music and then hitting play over here. Whoops. And uh, that's not what it's supposed to play. But anyway, let's just pretend that some drum and bass started playing right there, where you could then take and just listen to something that's not a, you know, sad, depressing music, uh, and just kind of take you away from the emotional connection that you can uh, sometimes develop to your, your budding colony, uh, and then uh, focus on just the fact that, you know, it's a spreadsheet simulator for the most part. Uh, it's basically just organizing num numbers across the board uh, in an attempt to balance the to, to balance the uh, the checkbook as best you can. That's effectively what the game is. It's a city builder. Most of them are like this. As a matter of fact, almost all of them are like this. Now, the only reason why I muted the music again was because I was playing, I was trying to basically disconnect myself from the game while and then focus on just the mechanics and just try some stuff and just try things and not have to worry about the uh, the the uh, the game itself. What does this mean though? It means that the music is very much. Uh, Probably just perfect for the mute for the game. They captured the mood absolutely perfectly. I had to turn it off so that I could focus from a from a numbers perspective uh, on the game itself, and, and from like an engineer's perspective on the game itself, and not from somebody who is looking at you know the the, the child who asked for for the town crier to call a town meeting because his mother who had died recently of. Uh, of hypothermia, he feels that she'll come to it if he calls an emergency all hands meeting from everybody in the town. That kind of stuff is all in the music and it is absolutely magnificent. It truly, truly, truly is. Now, uh, this is going to be another long interview for breakfast because there's a lot of stuff to go over here and I want to make sure I cover as much as everything as I can. A uh, couple things in the settings that first kind of threw me off, just so you guys know. Um, there's not a whole lot of stuff you can do. Uh, in terms of like control, um, you can't control if you're using the keyboard or mouse to kind of move things around like WASD, you can't control how sensitive that is, which is it's, it's, it's OK. You get used to just moving things around or just right clicking and dragging on the screen. You could do that, too. Um, graphics wise, borderless window, all that stuff is there. Uh, all of this stuff is totally I mean, you could turn on this, uh, turn all these these settings, uh, or turn them off, can tailor them, whatever. I have everything on Mac. I have a 980 Ti. So uh, and it runs uh, completely beautifully and it's it's a and of course it is a beautiful game uh, as well. You could change uh, the temperature scale from default uh, from uh, Celsius to uh, freedom units if you want to. Uh, I'll leave it on Celsius uh, for you guys because whenever it's funny, whenever I have it on Celsius, uh, nobody complains. Whenever I have it on uh, freedom units, I get lots of complaints. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. I am going to uh, I'm going to load. Let's see. I'm going to load a day one. Uh, that way you guys can see what a day one looks like. So load a day one here. And I'll show you what it's like to get started in this game. And then we'll go into my day 39 or day whatever it is, which may not seem like a long time. It is a long time. To get to day 30, whatever that was, is uh, four hours. And that doesn't factor in how many times you have to go through and, and make small adjustments to things as you're going through and organizing, pausing basically to continue working. So here is here is the game. We'll play at normal speed here. You're going to get a bunch of warnings pop up. There's everything basic pause. I was like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. And even, some of them are just completely non-consequential, inconsequential where they'll just say, you know, hey, don't take everyone's uh, 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 cries for help 
as meaning that you have to do something. It's like, okay, thanks for, thank you for telling me that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can see the sun is, is, uh, is rising here on our first day in the crater. Uh, the story is the world is basically frozen over and you and a group of people have fled you and a group being 80, 80 total people, uh, have fled and have planted your place right here. Um, you fled London, actually, to be specific. Uh, and now you've planted yourself here and you're going to go ahead and basically start a new life until people can figure out what the hell is going on or how to how to basically further survive in the game. Uh, you have a tech tree, which may not be open for us right now. Oh, sorry, your construction tree first. The tech tree is not available. You could build streets. Uh, streets are super important in order to actually get anything connected because the streets are not just streets like paved. If you look closely, there's actually a little pipe going through that. That carries heat from the steam, uh, this generator here. The generator also generates heat. You can see right now, everything is pretty cold. You can actually see the heat signatures of each individual person here. And then you can also see what the temperature is. So stockpile, the temperature is chilly, low risk of getting ill. So you have to manage a ton of stuff all the way down to make it so that people don't get sick because things, you know, because it's too cold. And in this game, uh, negative 20 degrees Celsius is chilly. <laughs> uh, first thing you do is look around. And you're going to see all these stockpiles, all these piles of, of just, just coal. And, uh, that's a coal deposit over here. You have some steel, uh, think of it kind of like, uh, just like any other kind of survival game. You have to go out and gather the resources in order to go through and build stuff, which you'll see right here. You have a tent, uh, you have uh, your health and medical outpost, uh, cookhouse, hunter's hut. These are very self-explanatory gathering to post tech which is a workshop that's where we actually go and unlock the tech tree itself uh one thing that i've done first you would think first thing you should do is go ahead and put down a whole bunch of houses for all of these poor folks right mm -mm. i've been putting down uh and you can rotate by middle clicking here i've been putting down the workshops first because the people can survive in negative 20 degrees celsius by just huddling up next to the generator they don't have to ne they don't necessarily need a house for the first couple days they will however tell you when they need uh, a house and they'll be very, very, very in your face about, hey, we need houses. Um, and actually, you know, before I commit to that, because I have a nice little stockpile here, what I'll do is, and we're gonna jump out of this and go to the real deal here in a minute. This is, this is cake. I've already blown this thing away now. And like, it's taken some time and some practice, but I can now blow through this first part pretty easily. But just like any other city builder, you can make a mistake pretty early on, not see it, not see it actually come to fruition uh, until like 30, 40 minutes in and it's quite, quite painful all right so i need uh so i want to get a gathering outpost and i'll put it like right here um how much wood do i have enough to build this thing not adjacent to a street so again that's very important it tells you right that little icon you gotta put a street down sure we'll put a street down we build a street so we're gonna extend it right off here and look at that it just happens to line up next to that do 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 oh no it doesn't I'm, I'm lying boom that's good enough though and now we let our folks work now we could just tap the three button twice three three it should actually be one, two, three for speed, right? Two, 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 let's see, one, two, no, no, two just, I don't know what two does. One goes back to play, that's so weird. Yeah, I'll show you what it does. Look at the top, there's play, right? I hit one to get there. I hit two, nothing happens. Hit three, and it goes to play. I hit three again, it goes to fast, triple fast forward. And then I hit two, it goes back to that, I don't understand. <laughs> All right, so this building, the, the uh, resource uh, gathering, or the gathering post has been uh, activated here. They will gather. Uh, I need one, at least one worker here to actually do this. Let's go and actually max this out on workers here. Um, you can assign engineers to things if you want to. If you look right here, this is actually going to update over time. Uh, but engineers supposedly uh, outperform workers in, in, in most cases. In some cases, they can't even participate because it's a worker's job, like hunting, for example. You don't send engineers out to hunt. So we start this up at three times speed here. Let them go through and cook through. We can see it's 4.2 per hour. That's of, of, of uh, wood and 2.0 pieces per hour of steel. So fight the cold. So yeah, they want to stockpile some. Uh, well, we already have. Well, let's go on wood crates here. Um, we actually go ahead and have these guys go out here and get these. And we still have 10 people available. So we could assign them. I mean, here's the thing. We have this post out here. We have 10 people basically gathering all this stuff. That's great. But you can, if you want go through and uh, dump a bunch of people in here with some engineers or something. Uh, and to actually, we need to take all the engineers out because we need those engineers to actually do some work elsewhere. So we'll throw them on the wood crates here just to kind of double up on uh, on the production out there. And you can see right here again, 4.0 pieces per hour. Uh, this is nothing because they haven't even started yet, apparently. Well, I know it's because uh, that's the numbers based off the people that are actually attached to it. Now here, 
These pop up all the time. It says, no roof over our heads. It says, I provide some shelter in two days. Okay, sure. Uh, or I provide shelter for everyone. Partial shelter or total shelter? Which one do you think you could possibly do? In my case, because of the way that I start out now with building uh, a number of uh, uh, of um, uh, workshops, so that way I can start getting, I start pounding out the tech tree. Uh, I always say I'll provide some shelter. Now, look at the very bottom here where it says discontent and hope, right? If, if, if hope runs out, they will rebel and you will be exiled. Or worse, if discontent fills all the way up, they'll probably kill you, right? That's the way the game works. You have to keep the people happy. They will bitch about everything. It fucking sucks out here, all right? This is, this whole thing, this whole, like, living out in the snow. They left London, uh, you know, for lack of natural resources to support themselves. Uh, and now they're out here in nowhere land trying to survive. Here we go. Now it's going to say here, click here. And it says the heating is off. We must get us a coal first. So consider signing the emergency shift law. So this is how the game kind of steers you into getting involved with like making new laws. New laws essentially is a way to kind of tailor uh, your the direction of your uh, uh, of your establishment, of, of your colony. And you could do this a number of ways and it branches off later. So we'll just start with just purpose I'll just, and I'll show you the rest probably later um, unless I forget. But just know that there's a that you could basically go the faith route or the order route. So you could go propaganda and Stalin or you could go the Pope. You could choose which way you want to go, which one, whichever one you think is the most effective. Uh, and over here, this is where you actually do some of the, you actually can enact certain basic laws. Uh, emergency shift that essentially just just extends um, uh, your work shift to 24 hours from the point that you actually activate it, which could also be in the middle of the night when everybody's off because they do have free time. They do have uh, work, uh, work shift time uh, and they do have sleep time. So you could just nix all that and just make them work. The unfortunate thing is, though, you can overwork somebody uh, and, and kill them. And when you kill somebody, then, of course, you know, the people get upset and the hope starts to fall on all this stuff. There's so many things. So there's a lot of stuff to balance here. Let's go ahead and actually activate child labor all right we're gonna sign that here for safe jobs for safe jobs. you could later go all jobs if you want to sign that right here this is gonna piss all the moms off it's basically what you do he's like oh look it's god we got it. thank you the word of advice See, this is the word of advice i was telling you about thanks dude thanks thanks i'll bear that in mind thanks buddy all right so we still don't have any coal unfortunately though we didn't get any coal before the first night everybody is now off if i had assigned that 24 hour thing then I could have actually gone through and uh, uh and actually make them work right now to go collect coal. But because I didn't collect coal first, they're all gonna die. Actually, I don't think they'll die. Let's go ahead and see what happens. But these these are amongst like the the plethora of things that you can severely screw up on the very first day. Uh, and like right now, they're all sleeping in the cold. This is one sick, probably from the cold. Four sick. Here we go. People froze to death. Look at that. They simply froze while sleeping outside. 24 people died on the first night. I have actually, that's kind of funny. I, I, <laughs> I've never, I've never done that before. I'm so glad I did this though, because you need to know that the game does not fuck around. If you make a mistake, sometimes you'll get punished right now. Sometimes you get punished right now, right? Like this. Oh, I forgot to go get, dig coal before the end of the first day. And I didn't sign into law the uh uh the 24 hour emergency shift and because i made those two mistakes the game is over just like that it gets a little more lenient when you get later on in the game it really does it gets a, a little more lenient speaking of let me show you where i'm at this is from earlier today so this is a a colony that has now extended itself Far beyond its entire its its initial landing here, this crater is but a stepping stone <laughs> to my world dominance. I'm at negative sixty degrees Celsius. I have two thousand eight hundred and thirty eight pieces of coal, eight hundred seventy nine chunks of wood, forty seven pieces of steel, and I'm just I'm just melting through that stuff so quickly for just whatever I need, right? Whether it be prosthetics whether it be uh, uh automaton or not automatons automatons or automatons damn it <laughs> basically it's these giant awesome mech things that actually haven't showed up just yet let's go and move this a little bit where did i put those guys where are those jerks at you almost can't miss them but for some reason i missed there's one right there look at this look at this beautiful creature this thing does work it does the work of 10 men and i guess in some cases also 15 they can also do medical work. It's really strange. They basically just put a robot in and they were like, yeah, it could do work for you. And it could do just about everything. 
after, of course, you unlock stuff. Now, as we zoom out a little bit farther, we can see all the different areas that I've actually gone ahead and explored outside of this. Now, I can't go to these places. I can't go there like the coal mine, zoom in, and then like zoom in just like I do my colony. This is my only colony. This is all I get, right? But I could send uh, a little, just little scouting um, groups out, and they basically explore. Uh, they find these locations. You know, like if you click on it, and then you send somebody. So I click on somebody. It's like this guy, and I click then and say, okay, I want to move you over here. Unfortunately, they're right in the middle of coming back or doing something right now. So I can't really bother them. Uh, and then they'll go and they'll explore, and then there'll, there'll be a little bit of a story there, and maybe get some resources, or maybe even some people who are trapped or stuck, or maybe they're stranded and they don't know how to survive out here. And so you escort them back, which I think is actually somebody's doing right now. Yeah, this guy right here, upper right corner, you can see there's kid gloves, the little kid gloves. That's seven kids are coming and 12 workers. No engineers, just, just seven kids, 12 workers. You have three types of people. Engineers, workers, kids. That's it. That's all you got. I have tons of kids and the child labor law enacted, and I don't use hardly any of them because once you start doing that, the moms are getting upset, the moms are getting upset, the husbands are getting upset, and then that's it. It just basically rolls downhill, and your hope and just and all that stuff just falls out the window. I don't know if that actually becomes a part of it, but yes, because the mothers do, it's always the, mo the moms, actually, in most cases, except for unless the kid is sick and then the father is the one carrying them in. Um, but yes, it is... Uh, there, it, the kids working create a lot more problems sometimes than it's worth. So, worth, so I just save them for emergencies only. Uh, you can go through and explore. You can set up outposts. So I have a coal mine here, and I have a tree, uh, a tree felling industry here. <laughs> Basically, they just go through and they they just haul back lumber every. Uh, this one actually, is, I have in eight hours, we get 800 coal. And then this one is just a handful of uh, of lumber to basically add to my collection. Now, there is a point in the game that's going to be coming up soon where I'm going to have to worry. We're going to have to deal with a, I guess, an extreme cold spell. Um, but we'll see. We may not get to that in this in particular indie for breakfast. Again, I want to ruin everything for you guys. Uh, but you can see if I zoom in here, I have quite the little city going. Uh, everything is built in a ring. Everything is built. In, that's how the grid works. I have the roads. Or the streets carrying the heat all the way down. My my generator is at steam level three. If you look at this, everybody's super toasty. Actually, I could save some. I could knock that down a little bit. And once I knock that down, you'll be able to see some of these locations. Uh, oops, let me actually. Sorry, let me go and start this up again. Pause. There we go. You'll see. Uh oh. Uh, okay. So we have the kids and everything. All right. You can expand the scouts. Beacon is in the bag. Okay. Yeah. So let's do that real quick. Um, I want to show you guys. This thing has before it pulled me out here. So you'll be able to, you should be able to see as the temperature drops, these houses that are like hot, like that's comfortable. We could pull it down just a little bit. Okay, we have more. Wow, we have a lot. All right, we'll have to deal with them in just a minute. Man, it keeps pulling me out of this thing. This is, by the way, this is the game. It is, the, there's constantly stuff happening. And again, once you mix it in with just like uh, the the emotions of, of, of just reading everything and being like, damn, man, this, this is a fucked up story. This is a terrible tragedy it's, that's, that's befallen these poor people. Different checklist, okay, good. This is just another upgrade. I'm really trying to get to the point where it actually tells me, or where it shows this thing that's cooling down, but it's not gonna happen apparently, because you know why? You know why? Because I just upgraded all these houses. They used to be huts, or not huts. Oh, well, basically, yeah, like tents. Like stuff that you would see in like a, like a, um, some kind of uh, third world country type of uh, uh, a documentary or something like that. And you'd see them like these shanty towns. That's basically what you had set up initially. Uh, and I have upgraded them, so I, now now I can actually lower the shit and save on tons of coal, which is great because again the the winter is coming, more winter, uh, in wintry winter. So I says, what looms ahead? Research beacon, telescopic lens. I should probably go ahead and uh and, and make that. Let's see, can I make that now? Let's see, beacon. Maybe at the beacon is where I make it. Uh, let's see, it's functioning. Let's see, research. I guess at the research. It does say research, huh? It's probably going to follow that. So here we go. Here's the tree. I've gone ahead and knocked out uh, tons of it. Uh, let's see, we'll go to, it wants me to go to exploration and industry, so somewhere in here is going to be, there it is, right there. They put it at the very top, probably, because they expect you to be able to unlock it, regardless of how deep into this tree you are. You have to pay for, you have to pay in resources to unlock every single tier and every single point throughout this thing. Uh, let's see, 16 hours. So here's the deal. 16 hours at 100% research rate. I have four... Four of these, oh, they're getting cold already. Yeah, they're getting cold. They don't like that. Okay, so steam level two, that's fine. Sea level one was a bit of a push, I, I admit. So, hey, what time is it? It's nighttime. So let's go ahead and actually make sure all of our, all of our, all of our workshops are topped off. So we have, which meaning that we have five engineers on each one. 
So the second they wake up and go to work in the morning, which I had them on extended hours. You can see a switch right here. I toggled it back and forth to the extended hours not, right? And this is per building, per building. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, you could also raise the heat in there if you want to, to kind of turn the heater on. And it should actually be on only for, yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's only when people are inside. So that's great, right? Automatic. And this is the emergency 24 hours. So if I needed that thing right now, like if I wasn't paying attention, I got the what looms ahead thing and it was all the way down because it's time left, right? Four days. If it got all the way down, I was like, oh crap, I have one day left. I could activate the 24 hour for all four buildings. They would all go out there and start working. And I'd get this thing knocked out in four hours because, or sorry, in, in, in like two and a half hours, uh, because I, it's 10, it's a 10 hour research. Uh, but I have four of these buildings. You have to have more than one building. You just cannot survive without it. Oh, here we go. Doom mongering drunks. So there are a dozen or so people got drunk and took to the streets. They were chasing after women yelling. So 12 people will leave the city forever. Uh, they'll send me home to sober up. It will affect hope and discontent. So actually just to, just to show you what the discontent hope balance looks like, we'll go ahead and look at the bottom. Now, if I banish them, banish these drunks, which would suck because that's basically a death sentence out here. Um, then you probably wouldn't see hardly any change. If anything, you might see discontent come down. Actually, you know what? We're gonna banish them because I have more people, the other people that need homes. And look at that, they don't need homes anymore. Why? Because I just banished enough people to cover for it. Yee! All right, so uh, let's go ahead and send some dudes out. You can see them go to work. We're going to send them, well, uh, not that one. Uh, let's look. We basically got almost everything. We'll camp Vulcan uh, and they'll take these guys and we'll go and send them out here. To, I'll send them out here to Camp Meteor because once those guys get to Vulcan, then they'll go out here and t knock that out. But that might unlock more. There's so many camps to go explore. Again, we don't know when the big storm is coming. Probably not gonna come again during this any for breakfast. Oh, oh yeah. My biggest pet peeve with the game, which was extremely infuriating initially when I was playing, is not, on top of all of the stops the game makes you do, right? All the different things that pop up and it's like, oh, you gotta, you, know, you gotta come over here and look at this thing or whatever, there's a pop up and it slows down time. Anytime somebody's got an issue, it pops up and it slows down time, that I get because then the issue could basically pass and you could end up missing out because of blank. Hold on, what do I have here? 46 people being treated. Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, on top of all that, every day at 5 a.m. at 0500 hours, the damn thing slows time back down to regular speed again. And so that for, some, for me just rubbed me the wrong way. Why? Why on top of everything else does that have to happen? I just noticed that the sun is actually, I wonder if they actually have seasons because I don't seem to recall there being a crest like this. Huh. I could be wrong. Here we go. The scientists couldn't believe their eyes but they double and triple check their calculations. They say the strongest winds of the storm will cause the temperature to plummet beyond anything we've ever experienced before. Hunting will be impossible. The plants in the hot houses will freeze. Everyone left outside the city will perish. And so will we if we can't heat our homes properly. We have to prepare. I don't know how long the storm lasts for because I've not yet gotten to this point. Prepare for the storm generator. We do what we could have raised the heat output of the generator. This alone might not be enough. All of our homes and, we're, and workplaces should be as warm as possible. That cold that's coming through could kill in minutes. This is why I upgraded all the houses in such a hurry. So we need to basically build a ton of storage units, basically. I have lots of resources, so we need to start building tons of storage units and start stocking up on everything. Also, we have a number of people that are unemployed, uh, just a ridiculous amount of unemployed folks because everything that I've gotten so far has been pretty, uh, every, 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 every step of this so far, I've been a little bit ahead of the game, right? I'm waiting for it to take it back from me though. All right, so here we'll basically go through. Hunter's huts don't necessarily need any kind of heating or anything. They just need to be adjacent to a street and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick a couple out here, a couple out here. We wanna get these guys out. I don't know when exactly the cold is coming. You could see, all right, never mind. it's 43, 43 hours. This is good. I mean, this is bad, but this is good because we could get some 40 more people going and get these people out and hunting and stocking up and stockpiling things before the storm comes. That is the goal, and if, it's, if that's that's 43 hours, 44 hours, and we have two days to do this, it is the end of the first day here. We have two full work days to do this before the storm comes in. I, I'm guessing because of the because of the 43 hour mark there. Let's go and get them started here. Once they build all that, oops, uh, it's actually after hours here. I can't make people work after hours to build something, unfortunately. No, they should be. They should still build it. Actually, Let's see, 1800. So yeah, they should still come and build it. Regarding, yeah, it doesn't matter what time you actually build something, they will come out and build it. All right, 
Let's go ahead and get it. Work is done for the day, but they'll still build it, though. The building stuff takes place no matter what time, for the most part. All right, so we have maximum number of people there, maximum efficiency. Let's go ahead and now build. Uh, I'm actually getting a little worried about what's coming here. Let's go ahead and build uh, the resource depots. And we'll basically string a bunch of these around somewhere. We could put them out here if we want to. Get them out of the heat range. The heat range of that, this little thing right here, is provided. You can see the circle there. We don't need heat for this. It's basically just storage. So let's keep it away from there as best we can. It has to be just adjacent to a street, and that's pretty much it. And we want this to basically store food. And that's it. You should see people coming out. I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the morning here, and they're coming out to build stuff. So if that doesn't say anything... <laughs> um... There we go. All right, now it's uh, you've got some search camp Vulcan. Let's go over there real, very quickly because we have to pull these guys back. Uh, scientists, perfect. We'll bring them back. That means my team will be back and we'll be good. Another seven hours, other uh, folks will be there, but my other team will be there, and we'll be able to pull in more people. So we need food. We need everything. So let's go ahead and boom. Let's go ahead and say like this is coal. Uh, let's go ahead and say this is wood. Let's go ahead and say this is steel. And then let's say this is raw food, and this is... Come on, come on. Also raw food, and food rations. Probably change, let me see. I don't necessarily need a ton of steel, and I have plenty of storage for that, so let's change that to raw food. Because I'm anticipating, hopefully, getting a ton of raw food out of this, out of having a ton of people going out and getting stuff. And I have nine people that are homeless. That's the, uh, are they back already? No, but there's somebody else. That's fine. I have the resources to build a house. Right, stat. So we'll do that. A house. House is the tier three home. Tier one being the shanty. Tier two being a bunkhouse. Whatever that is. And tier three being a beautiful, beautiful house. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for a spot that has heat already near it so it qualifies like right in here oh not quite it doesn't quite fit those hunter huts could probably go but it's a bit too late for that now isn't it oh christ i can't you know what i could right here perfect there we go and it's all within the sphere of influence of this i can crank this up i've actually researched to actually crank this up um you could adjust it to only work during work hours or whatever but i have homes in this area so i have to come all the way up so the range setting here if i toggle this you'll see it expands out quite a bit that's quite a bit of area that it actually expands out as you can see the automatons what the fuck are these things called again where's the damn name sawmill workplace oh there it goes uh, automatons there you go i was close i call them abomatrons just funny all right scouts have returned to the city it's 19 more people that need a house before the big storm comes in and I, I am just perplexed. Like, how is, how did I create a gap like that? It's so silly. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and build uh, a house here and a house here. And you're probably thinking, well, actually, this one right here may not get any heat. Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. All right. Uh, you're probably thinking, oh, gosh, this can't fit anything in there. You can. You just got to build a road that attaches all those things. And that's it. Done. All right. Waiting. We got people waiting. Gosh, I can't leave these guys waiting too long. Can I get them out there and back? No, probably not. Um, those guys are at home. We'll leave them there. These guys, however, are somewhere. We need to see what they got. Nothing to see here. <sighs> okay, I could risk trying to get them somewhere else. A scattered convoy, large crater, or try to pull them back. I think it's probably the safest thing to do is to pull them back. it only take them a little while to get here, though. Let's go and send them out farther. Why not? All right. 20 people still looking for homes, but that's going to be taken care of in just a moment. That street did not connect, it looks like. Let's go and turn this around. Get back to that street. What's up with this damn street? There you go. When well, red, I mean that the work is coming here. Gather at least a week's worth of food for each citizen. Okay, yeah, it's nice. It's nice that it tells you what you have here, what you need. I don't have anywhere near that. That's totally not gonna happen. A week's worth? Boy, that's gonna suck. Uh, fighting over supplies. Keep me updated. Hopefully, hopefully we could get, hopefully we could get enough supplies going. <laughs> it's not going to happen. This is why I have that save. <laughs> 300 food supplies. Oh man. There it goes. You go outside and you're dead. You see, they're all very unhappy here. Uh, hot house. Yeah, unfortunately the hot house and all that stuff, you need to have a steam. Uh, steam core, and I don't have any steam cores at the moment. 
So here you go, mobs towards the stockpile. Oh boy. Uh, disperse the crowd, people may get hurt. The city comes first, discontent will rise, hope will fall. Well, let's see what happens. Again, I have a save, we're good. I can roll this bitch back. Let's go ahead and actually crank this up a little bit more. Raise that heat level value just a little bit more. People are getting really upset. This guy has no home, that's fine. He's just gonna die, whatever. <laughs> I have 518 people, damn it. Don't have time for this nonsense. So this is basically full. That little, little, little icon there basically means that storage is near capacity. Uh, I could continue to work locally uh, just fine. My biggest issue, again, is just getting food in. If we look at the charts here, it will tell you what your food intake is per day. I am actually bringing in... That's the food, actually, the food consumption. Food gain is 220 per day. I am actually not going to make this week. I'm glad that I did this because now when I actually go back and play it, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, actually increase the number of huts I have by a bazillion and just have everybody going out and just hunting for these first couple days. Build a couple hot, well, actually I can't build any hot houses again because I don't have any steam cores uh, and get people out uh, and get them go get them basically <sighs> hunting and everything for me. But yeah, the efficiency of all this up is zero, zero percent. Uh, wow, I wonder why. Probably because they're out. Oh, you know, because they haven't returned yet. I bet once they return after the first full day, then we might see those numbers change just a little bit. Is the game pause? Yeah, unfortunately it pauses. That's another thing. A game pauses every other time you pull up something. So let's go look at the book of law here for me. The book of law you guys already saw. Go to the adaptation. I signed the child labor thing, right? I haven't gone beyond that anywhere, right? Because my only other thing is child labor, all jobs. I don't really feel like putting anybody in there. Uh, and if I've expanded out, I got a cemetery. I, have, I make soup. Uh, down here, I have a care house and the prosthetics. The prosthetics are great because it gets people who have uh, maybe gotten frostbite and lost and lost a limb. They get to come back into service and start helping. It also improves morale that they actually get a prosthetic, which is awesome. Which of course, of course, it would. Uh, over here with purpose, this is the order part. I went through order instead of faith. Uh, I have neighborhood watch. I have cops and I, I have people watching the place. Morning gatherings. Uh, foreman will basically help people work 40% faster per building. Oh, and a new order actually. I haven't seen this one yet. Let me see. With interest, new order. Who all who voice doubts will be treated as traitors. Obedience is the highest virtue. Ooh, hope will never be a problem again. <laughs> a public execution space is will be built. Some public enemies will die. Some people will feel compelled to fight this law. Some of them will die. Hope will never be a problem again. That is hilarious. Uh, let's see. Agitator. This is somebody who goes around and strategically plays loudspeakers or reminders that is of the importance of the work and the increased efficiency. Uh, you have to build three agitators. So they raise the efficiency of nearby workplace by 20%, though. You know what? We might as well go that route. Once you sign it, it goes in immediately. Those things that you just signed in are available to build right now. And you could just go through and put, uh, put one, like, right here. Put one. This is loudspeakers, so you just basically place them wherever you want. Put them out here with the uh, the automatron here. Let's see. I'm gonna say that wrong as often as I possibly can. By the way, all right, work day is over, so we have our first load of food. It's not a lot. It's not looking pretty. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here and see what it says. 100% efficiency across the board. It did do all the pre-calculations. It did know how much I was gonna get. My maximum storage is only 2,100 food, so we might end up flipping things. Uh, in terms of what we store in certain certain uh, uh, resource gathering areas, but preparing for this storm is incredibly intensive. Apparently, my coal my coal consumption is is just okay, and it's going to actually get worse. Unfortunately, uh, I do have the coal mines working. The outpost depot brings in a ton uh, coal mines. I have all this stuff going. This is actually the most I could get. I could swap out these coal mines for a steam coal mine. That's going to help for the efficiency a lot, as you can see. Actually, I should probably do that right now. Uh, but that outpost depot losing that because of the storm is going to really suck. Now, keep in mind, if you get this game, you're not going to get to this point within the first couple hours. I mean, maybe since you watch me play, you know, maybe, maybe you watch, you get there in a couple hours. But no, but for the most part, you're going to be sitting here kicking yourself in the face, like just trying to get through this damn thing. Um, medical health status, zero untreated citizens. I'm on top of that, at least housing, comfortable, cold. So one, one of them is cold. I should go to the building here and see what it is. Uh, let's see, agitators built. All right, encouraging words it says. Let's see, it's this guy right here. Ah, wait, no, 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 not you. It's you. Yes, you are just outside of the sphere of influence for my, for this, and that's very unfortunate because I am. You know what? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, you guys just deal with it. Just a couple, and just a couple, you know, cold people. They're fine. How are these guys? What are you guys doing? Uh, oh, good, they're home. Okay, awesome. So they're seeking shelter. The cold is coming. I've gotten, I'm almost maxed out on coal. My my steam or my metal is full. My food is not. 
This is a this is dead. This is a dead colony. They'll probably kick me out in the middle of the storm. And that's pretty much it. This is as well as I had prepared for this for this moment. I was not prepared for how much food you needed to get. Again, thankfully I can roll back. Uh, which means you should save often. Time is progressing slowly. Let's go ahead and bring on the storm and see what it looks like here. I think what we should probably do as a minimum is at least go through and uh, replace the... Let's see... Steam coal mine. Oh, you know what? I don't have any cores. Five more people died. That's the people in that house, by the way. Don't believe me? Let's go take a look. No residents. See? Just like that. Poof. They gone. So discontent and hope will be adjusted accordingly. And now we wait. We await our fate. Here it comes. The storm of the century. If, it, if I could just wait a little while, get some more trees in. But no. As the sun sets negative 80 degrees Celsius, I could crank this guy up no more. I can overdrive it if I need to, to raise all the heat zones, which all the heat zones include all of the little steam, the little heat centers that are set up all over the map like this one right here that's influencing these these how these homes right here it'll raise those as well because they're all on the same pipeline if we look at this here you'll see that a lot of those houses are toasty warm actually they're so toasty warm i'm gonna kick it back a notch look at that that's perfect that's where you need to be building houses may have saved my ass unfortunately i don't have the food to make it through this let's see what happens Somebody has died. Negative 83. I talk way too much. Here it is. The storm hits the city. A howling gale bursts upon the city and the generator creaks and groans under the weight of the wind. Pale faces turn towards rattling windows. Trembling lips utter words of prayer. The cold will be brutal. Hunting is impossible. The soil in the hothouses will freeze. We'll have to make do with the food that we've stockpiled. The city must survive. It will not. I do not have the food currently available because I did not have the time to prep. So with that, we're gonna shut down the shut down the generator. Everyone's gonna be very upset with me as all the homes start to cool and they will eventually move from chilly to cold to very cold, then to freezing. And that will be it. Go ahead and speed things up and you'll be able to watch this happen uh, in time-lapse form content my discontent for me has moved up hope is somehow also moving up for some reason despite the fact that all the homes are now very slowly moving into the freezing territory and i expect everybody will die in this very first night of the storm of the century here we go let's go ahead and sit back and watch See what he says. Sir, one of our engineers wants to talk to you. He's concerned about the danger of the cold. Oh, keep me informed. Of course, there's danger in the cold. What's wrong with here? Auto oh, the automaton can't refuel, which means that it can no longer work because it uses the little heating stations as a means to recharge themselves. They continue going. And as you watch, you have 72 people, 74 people that are sick. Eight are gravely ill. I do not have enough, enough places to put all these sick people. 88, 90, 90 and 8. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. They will survive the first night. But some of them uh, will not last through the next day. Or even the next night. For sure. We'll speed right through this. The wind, I can't hear my own thoughts. The mines are freezing. Sir, it's so cold that the hydraulic roof supports on our coal mines are falling. If the tunnels collapse, the lower levels will be cut off. We should either abandon them or send volunteers to replace the supports, but the task is extremely dangerous. Abandon the lower levels. The output of all coal mines will fall by 80%. We cut that off. Those coal mines are now effectively useless. It's 10 a.m., approaching noon. Everything is freezing at negative 100 degrees Celsius. So you're not sure what that is. If you're look, if you're looking at this from freedom freedom units perspective, we can go over here, changing the Fahrenheit, apply that. You can see it's negative 148 degrees. 
It is absurdly cold, <laughs> to put it lightly. The people are furious. Send guards to calm them down. They'll be fine. Just send the guards out there. There's nothing wrong. Everything will be fine. I have a master plan. One person has died. It's not a big deal. Just one. We're totally fine. Two people have died. It's anomaly. It'll pass. Storms harvest. This calls for drastic measures. You'll have three days to use triage. All these people are ill. Disperse the crowd. I'll find another solution. Let's go ahead and actually disperse the crowd. The discontent will fall. We've got to save ourselves for as long as we can and see if we watch everybody die and freeze on the first night. I guess one way I could do it is actually go through and click on every single house and remove them from it. That's possible. Fear of a coal shortage. We'll make it anyways. Don't worry. We're fine. We're fine. Nothing to fear here. Everything's under control. The game is continually pausing on me. It wants me to stop and see what the fuck I'm what the fuck I'm doing wrong. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've caught this. Negative 148. Is it gonna drop again? It looks like it might actually drop again. That can't be. That has to be a marker. It dropped again. That is it. Coal theft. We'll make it anyways. Don't worry. Two hundred and one ill people. If we look at this again, you can see that everybody is freezing. Everything is freezing. The people are furious. We must hold on a couple more days. Uh, so yeah, sure, they can last a couple days. Surely they can. You can see now I have a marker down here. This is really important. If you look at this, it says exactly why people are upset. And also it tells you what you need to bring discontent down to in two days in order to qu basically quell a coup. <laughs> the heating is off. Of course it's off. I did that on purpose. The game is like stalling out. Doesn't even know what to do. Just kill everybody. You see the flashlights from all my watch post guards walking around. It is just... Just painful. 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. and again it slows everything down. It's going to speed things back up. I didn't think it was possible to get this cold. It's insane. It's going to drop again. 169, 171, 175, 180. Almost 200 below zero. Almost 200 below zero. The storm is not giving up any time in the next 50. Uh, next. Yeah. Wow. 50. 50. What is that? 50 days. Oops. I was looking at the hours actually. Which actually, that would, that's probably a better way to look at it. <laughs> well, when we started out, when it was like, what, 48 hours? It was like two, three days away. Before, darkness before dawn, Sir would have engineered some crashing through the door, white face demanding to see you. He says, I've run calculations with new data. The storm will pass in a couple days, but the temperature just before the end will drop drastically. Nothing can protect us from such cold. Panic is starting to spread and people are starting to lose hope. We said we have to stay strong because what's right? Words of encouragement. Words, that'll fix things. Here we go. Generator still down. 277 people, 275 people because a couple just died are ill, while 77 are gravely ill. Probably some kind of some form of severe frostbite. I'm not even gonna click on that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Nighttime is coming. The the automaton the automatons are walking around here. Automatons. Storms harvest. Disperse the crowd. Surely they will turn on me. I'm waiting for them to turn on me so that way we can end this. You can see the numbers falling. That means I've missed, I'm missing engineers from there because they've died. <laughs> oh man, this is it. 405 people, 408. Look at the amount of people are hungry. Hope is completely tanking. Look at how fast hope is dropping. It's gone. Hope is gone. Nine people have died. Pretty much almost the entire population now has hypothermia or frostbite hope is gone i didn't think it was possible hell is frozen over click on this force them to work force them to work i will tell you when you could stop every single ding is somebody or a group of people dying what is it what do you want miracles happen oh look at this he's found his he's found his daughter that he set out to well you came back at kind of a bad time i'm sorry to hear buddy we just have to make it through. People are starving right here towards the end. The freaking end. Force them to work again. Panic is spreading. Hope is going up though. Why? Oh, it's too late. Your time has come. They exile you. Good riddance. We'll be better off without them. Actually, well, it's pretty irreparable what I've done to you. But it did look like 
the sun you saw on the timeline it was coming up it was going to be there it was going to be there pretty quickly you are deposed a band of grim men drags you under the generator the crowd erupts to angry shouts hang the bastard throw him into the generator you are summarily judged and spare the death sentence in recognition of your efforts you are banished from the city instead again during the worst storm of the century uh and i just say basically oh you know i did my best and the game just says well try again and that's it. That's Frostpunk. You can go through if you want to and go to custom select scenario and make a custom scenario here and it's the unlocked in 20 days of arc. So this is basically a custom scenario. You go through and you do something slightly different from what you currently have. You can also go to uh, a main story and you can actually customize that if you want to. Uh, customize scenario. You can make society's attitude easy. Weather easy. Economy easy. Everything's super easy. Difficulty easy. Basically just drop everything back if you wanted to. Or you can make it even more difficult than what it is. This game is phenomenal. From the music to the uh, to just the look and the aesthetic to everything you have to do, it's it's banished. I mean, Banished when it came out was a remarkable game from such a from from such a small studio of like basically nobody, you know, and 11 bit studios. They're not a huge company, right? I, I have had dinner personally with these guys right they're just dudes <laughs> and they've 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 got a studio where they built this these these magnificently tear-jerking games after anomaly warzone they did anomaly which is a uh, a turret uh, um oh christ i can't remember what the hell genre was but basically it was uh just a turret whatever <laughs> game <laughs> I can't think right now. I'm done. This game is so taxing. And then they had This War Is Mine, another just uh, various, just a storytelling type of game experience. And uh, in this game, of course, you're also still making the decisions and controlling these people and everything. Very similar to Banish in that respect, in terms of a city builder's concern. Uh, but there's just, I feel like this game uh, just has so much, it's so cohesive in what it does. And there's, again, the only gripe that I have uh is that at 5 a.m it slows the game down and i don't need that i don't need you to tell me when it's 5 a.m dude i <laughs> got this so that's it the game is called frost punk you can currently get it on steam for 29 dollars and 99 cents i'll tell you in its current state even if i manage to beat the game there's still the there's still the ability to go back it might be the game in the next like three hours or something right there's still the ability to go back and uh, and, and make a more difficult uh, scenario for yourself or play one of the other unlocked scenarios. So there's definitely enough content here. They have a lot of free content planned as well uh, and an expansion currently in the works because of the, uh, uh, I guess, because of the the huge reception that they received for this game and it's well-deserved. It's a, it's, it's a really nice couple of guys. Uh, well, the ones that I had met, the owners of the company. Um, and... They deserved it. I didn't play hardly any of this War is Mine simply because uh, I didn't want to get emotionally involved in a game. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to have feelings right now. And then I played this damn game, and it's just beautiful. So that's it. The game is called Frostpunk. My name is Mike B A K Phony. This is Any for Breakfast. Thank you for watching. I'll see you.